All right, today we're going to be looking at how to build a music visualizer in Godot. If you're not familiar, Godot is a game engine. It's open source, free, so, so anyone can use it. I've based my code off of a demo that comes with the engine itself called the Audio Spectrum Demo. Uh, but I'm going to show some of the uh, variations that I've made and so you can see some details about how it works. First thing we're going to go over is the basic structure. Now, uh, what I've created in this scene is I've used as the root node a node 2D. Under that, for each of the visualizations I want to show is a character body 2D. This is kind of a container for everything that the visualization needs. And under that is an audio stream player with the track loaded and uh, the other component is a line 2D. This is what's actually doing the drawing. So uh, first uh, we're going to look at the audio uh, needs. There's a couple things that we have to hook up to make this work. So you see I have this audio stream player mapped to a bus called bus one. You can really map it to any bus you want, but the important thing about that bus is that it has a spectrum analyzer effect enabled. This is what's going to allow us to, uh, to analyze the audio and provide some output that we can use to visualize. Uh, so right now I have that mapped to bus one, and that's going to link up with the first script we're going to look at. Both the character body 2D and the line 2D have scripts. Uh, the the responsibility of the of this script that's attached to the character body 2D is to analyze the audio and generate an uh, one value that we call an impulse, uh, and that just that just describes how how strong the music is at that moment in time. Uh, so we'll take a look at that script. Uh, this variation I have is is pretty simple in terms of what it's doing. Uh, ultimately, it's just taking all of the frequencies, uh, all of the, the magnitude of each of the frequencies that we're tracking and adds them up. Uh, but how it does that is first you have to define the frequencies you want to look at. So here I have nine bands uh, to look at and... I, uh, to hook this up, we access that spectrum analyzer using get bus effect instance. So this bus ID that we've, we've configured, uh, we've configured it to look at bus one. Um, and then the zero here is the index of the effect we want to look at now. So since the spectrum analyzer is the only effect here, uh, that's the index that we're going to find it at. So with that, we have the spectrum variable that we can use um, that we can use all throughout this script. And what that does is, and this is actually a code snippet that I took right from the audio spectrum demo that came with Godot. Uh, what we do is we call for each band, we call a method called get magnitude for frequency range and we, we give it the low and the high uh, frequencies of that band, and we get, back, uh, we get back a float value, and then to convert it to something that's easier to use uh, for an impulse is the linear to dB function, and then we pass that to, uh, I'm not actually sure what these do as they are pulled straight from uh, the example, but this, uh, but this converts it to a value that's much easier to use. So we add all of these up, and uh, that gives us uh, an impulse value. And here we have it mapped to a max value. I've configured that here to be uh, 100, I believe. Uh, yeah, so a max impulse of 100, so that's what's going to come out of this script. 
Now, uh, the other script that we want to look at is the line 2D. Although we have a few variations of the line visualizer, uh, we're just going to look at one here in this video, uh, and that's one that's based on a sine wave. And so how this works is every, it's uh, about 10 times a second, we add a new line segment to this line. And now the X value of this line segment is the same each time because it's starting from the same place. But the Y value, uh, we base on the movement of a sine wave. So we do that by taking a, an angle in radians and we increment it by the same amount each time. And then we multiply that value. Uh, well, we, we pass that to the sine function. And then we take that, that value and we multiply it by this impulse we get from the audio analyzer. And this gives us and this gives us our y value. The other, uh, the other thing that we have to decide here is the width of that line segment. Now the way that that's done is with the width curve. So this is something, um, width curves are a property that's built into Godot for line 2Ds and you can actually configure them, uh, you, you can configure them right in the UI but what we do in this script is we randomize it. So every time we have to add a line segment, we come up with a random width for it. And then uh, this is kind of where uh, I had a mistake come in, is I was trying to keep these widths stable. It's hard to do that uh, with the width curve if you're adding line segments to a line 2D uh, if you just have a static width curve, those widths are going to, to drift as the line gets more segments. Uh, so I tried to calculate this to keep it stable, but it didn't really work. Uh, but it turns out to have a pretty cool effect, which you can see here. If you'd like to see the other variations I have, you can check out the GitHub repository that I've put in the description. Uh, but that's all I'm going to show for now. So if you've made it this far, thank you. Uh, do consider subscribing because I'm going to keep working on these visualizers and uh, I'll keep posting update videos on them. Uh, so thank you.